Hey, people of God, Pastor Che here of Victorious Life Christian Center, and I am so excited about the opportunity to come before you again and bring you another powerful mini message. So we'll get right into it. The message for today is called Still Small Voice. You know, our senior pastor, Pastor Nate, he has always said to us and, and really stressed this to me. He says, son, the greatest thing that you can do is learn how to master hearing the voice of God. And man, when he said that to me, it really struck a chord deep within me. And since that point, I have really tried to continually work hard on my relationship with God as far as from a listening aspect. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I pray, many times when I pray, my mind is trying to run all over the place. So many things are trying to get in the way. And so I find that when I pray, I like to pray either really early in the morning or really late at night when everything going on around me is very still. You know, I think about the word Jesus always went away real late at night or early in the morning to get away to pray when everything was still. And, and so I'm looking at him as the example to try to figure out why did he need things to be so calm, to be so still. You know, um, if we were to go to First Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 13, uh, this scripture is talking about Elijah. In, in chapter 18, he had went to the mountain and challenged uh, all of the people who followed Baal, and they cut up their bull and placed it on their altar with wood, and he cut up his bull and placed it on the altar, and with wood and then he had the servants pour make a trench and pour water all the way around the trench and pour water all on the bull that he was sacrificing and so he let the Baal worshipers go first the the 450 uh Baal worshiping leaders so to speak and they were chanting and and praying and man from morning to noon and he started to taunt them he was like maybe maybe your god is asleep Maybe, you know, you're not doing enough. And so they, they chanted harder and slashed themselves and did all kind of weird things and nothing happened. And so Elijah goes on ahead to call on the name of God and boom, everything got smoked. I mean, the rocks got burnt up, the, the, the wood, the bull, the water, everything was gone and the people fell and began to worship God. I tell you that story just to give you a little background because in chapter 19, Elijah ran away because Jezebel wanted to kill him. And so he was running. And so God comes to him in chapter 19, verse 11 through 13. And he, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper oh man i hope you hear what i'm saying after the fire came a gentle whisper when elijah heard it he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave then a voice said to him what are you doing here elijah why do i tell you that little story i tell you that because when there are things going on in our life 
Maybe we're frustrated. Maybe we're mad. Um, maybe there's things that we want and we, we just don't see when it's going to happen. So many things can get in our way because of our wrong thinking that we cannot hear the still small voice of God. I'll say it again. Um, he said to Elijah, he said, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. I want you to hold on to that word whisper because I asked God, why would you just whisper it to him? But man, isn't God so good? Because even in a whisper, Elijah heard it. I want to tell you a little story that I read recently or this morning as I was doing my devotional. I read about a Christian man. His car was in an alley and there were cars parked inside the alley on both sides. So he only had a little bit of room to back out of the alley. And so he backs his car up all the way to the edge of the alley. And because there's cars parked on the side of him, he could not see out into the street. And so he pretty much had to just take a guess on when the right time was to back out into the street. And so right when he got ready to hit the gas pedal, to take his shot at backing out, he heard a still small voice say, don't move. And so he hit the brakes. And right when he hit the brakes, a semi truck drove right by. He would have been killed by that semi truck. And so here's my point in telling you that when he heard the voice, he hit the brake and he said, thank you, God, that I heard your voice. But then he was mad at God. He said, God, how come you didn't yell at me? What if why did you just whisper at me? What if I couldn't hear it? And who here's what he said. God told to him. He said that whisper is all you're ever going to get. Oh, my goodness. Wow. What a powerful story. You know what? After I heard that story, I begin to reflect on my relationship with God and the way that he speaks to me. And here's what dawned on me. You know that God has never yelled at me. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. I can't speak for you, but I'm saying in my walk with God, he has never once yelled at me. But there are times that his whisper has been louder than anything else that's around. All the noise that's taking place. But I can still hear his voice. You know, God, he speaks to us in a small, still voice and doesn't yell because he is close to us. See, I've investigated his spirit is on the end side of us. See, you can hear your conscience when everything else is going on. You could be at a parade, a party, but you cannot deny the voice that you hear in your head and in your heart. He is on the inside of us. And if we make the time to listen to him, a whisper is all that is needed. In Jeremiah 33, 3, God said to Jeremiah, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. People of God, I want you to understand that I so value my quiet time in the Lord when it's just me and him. And I'm working like never before to learn how to quit talking so much and just be Still, the Bible says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. And so many times I think we want to go to God and we have so much to say that it becomes a monologue and we never give God the time to allow it to become a dialogue. So people of God, I want to leave you with five things that, that I feel will help you hear God's still small voice. Number one, I want you to recognize that people with real authority never have to be loud to be heard. Hallelujah. When you find somebody who is an authority figure and people know who they are, they don't have to raise their voice because they are respected. Number two, make space to dwell 
in the pasture of prayer. I talked about last week in Psalms 100 that we are the sheep of God's pasture. Wow. Do you know that you could go to your prayer closet, to your place of prayer, and you could be fed? But you have to listen so that God can feed you what you need. The Bible says in Psalms 46:10, it says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You know what? I want God to be exalted in me. And so I need to be still to allow him to speak into my life so that when I get up from that place of prayer, I am full and I have something to go give to the world. Number three, the power of prayer isn't in your words, but in God's words. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, sometimes you're talking so much that you cannot hear. Pastor Gail, she always says, God is always talking. He's always speaking, but who is listening? Number four, reading the Bible will help you to know how God speaks. He will never contradict his own word. Oh man, I hope this helps you because when you read the Bible, you begin to understand how God speaks. He will always speak through his word. John 10, 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. You know how many times I've been in a situation and you're trying to figure out what to do and maybe you hear something and I'm like, oh no, that's not, nah, that ain't God. Why? Because I know his word. I have hidden thy word in my heart, the inner man, my will, that I might not sin against thee. Amen. So when you read the word and you spend time in prayer listening to God, when you're in situations where you need answers, you will hear his word. And then lastly, people of God, I simply want to tell you, don't box God in. But be open to him speaking to you in new ways. You know, so many times we expect, well, I pray like this, so I expect God to answer me like this. And I just want to tell you, God is not a God of limitation. God can do anything, any way he chooses. So in your prayer time, when you ask God something, ask him to speak to you the way that you will understand. And however that is, you will understand. So people of God, that's my mini message for you today. I feel like that was powerful and I got that from God in my prayer time. And I hope that you will, like myself, really be working on being still in his presence, not talking so much and, and learning how to become a better listener. I've also heard it said that we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen more than we speak. God bless. And I look forward to seeing you again. Amen.